Israel says it has delivered enough polio vaccines for more than a million people in Gaza. The vaccine shipment started after the first case of the deadly disease was found after a quarter century. It's unclear how the vaccines would be distributed and administered in the war-torn territory. Aid groups plan on vaccinating more than 600,000 children and have called for a ceasefire to allow them to start their vaccination campaign immediately. Bringing Dr. John Killer. He's the co-founder of the NGO Met Global and a pediatrician who's visited Gaza multiple times this year already. Dr. Killer, welcome to DW. Now, how dangerous would a large-scale polio outbreak be in a war zone like Gaza? Well, first of all, thank you for the thank you for the invite. Uh, a a large-scale outbreak of polio would be a very, very significant event. It would be both a significant monitor of a bad public health event as well as a medical catastrophe. Um, there hasn't been a case of polio in Gaza in 25 years, and for 20 years before that, the cases were diminishing. So there's very few people there that have experienced this, and when they did, they experienced it at a time when there was a better public health uh, infrastructure. There is zero public health infrastructure now. Yeah, are the amounts of vaccine available enough to contain a major outbreak? If there's a million doses of vaccine, it's 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 enough to contain a uh, contain an outbreak. The issue isn't amount of vaccine. There's plenty of vaccine in the world, and there'll be plenty of people to give it. The issue is the safety in giving it, how you're going to give it, uh, and then the repeat doses, uh, because it's not an issue of one and done. It's an issue for those kids who have not been vaccinated. It's an issue of two doses separated by six to eight weeks. So to what extent would a successful vaccination campaign be possible if fighting continued at its current intensity then? Well, I can't estimate that, but certainly the issue is uh, an issue of safety. If you've got a group of people that are afraid for their lives and you tell them there's a potential of a disease that may harm them, if they come to a certain area to get the, the vaccine, most people are going to opt to stay safe. So it's going to be an extremely difficult situation, both from a public health messaging standpoint, but also a very, very scary situation for, for those personnel that are there to administer the vaccine, uh, given that they will be uh, depending on this whole concept of deconfliction. And we know how, how fraught that is with mistake. Yeah. But can you explain to us how the war and the humanitarian situation are making it easier for diseases like polio, but others as well, to spread in Gaza? So um, most contagious diseases are um, a function of congestion. Um, there are some that are easily contagious, such as respiratory diseases like COVID and measles. Uh, and then there are some that are contagious because of breakdown in hygiene, and that's oral fecal, that's hand to mouth. Um, there is no adequate uh, hygiene in Gaza, zero. Um, so people, even when they clean their kid, they clean the kid's diaper and stuff like that, they won't be washing their hands, they'll be touching their own mouth, they'll be spreading it. Polio vaccine is also a type of vaccine that can live off the body. So it'll be in the soil, it'll be in the water, um, um, and easily spread with lack of with with poor with poor gastrointestinal hygiene because it goes hand to mouth. Mm. You know, many countries spent decades trying to eradicate polio and doing so successfully. Now, if it really gained a foothold in Gaza, how easily could it spread internationally? Well, it can. The, the, there's no question that the virus will go internationally. That's mm. not a question. Um, anybody who's been in the Gaza Strip, who's worked intimately for any period of time um, uh, with the patients that have it, some of those people will carry it. The, it's an extremely contagious disease, meaning it goes, it's easily spread, but the good thing about it is that it can be broken by, by uh, um, what's called herd immunity, and most countries most countries in the world, other than a certain subset of them, have, our, have herd immunity. One of the worries is for vulnerable populations. So there are populations that for religious reasons or ethical reasons or whatever reasons, don't get their children uh, vaccinated. 
All of those children will be susceptible if the virus gets into that subcommunity. Those communities are usually pretty localized. So if you can keep it out of those communities, you'll be all right. The general population, the general population will be pretty well protected around the world. That's Dr. John Kaler. He's the co-founder of the NGO Med Global. Thank you so much for your time and those very interesting insights. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for having me.